Hey, what's up everybody? This is CLS All-in-One. Today I'll show you how to make some custom rebar and wood railing for concrete steps. This type of railing could be used for other applications as well, but you might have to make your own modifications to make this type of railing work. So to start off with, I have to install some wood to concrete brackets. And for this, I'm using Simpson Strong Tie Easy Base Brackets I purchased from Home Depot, along with some 3-inch concrete anchors. After determining where I want my post located, I use the brackets as a template to mark my holes using a hammer drill. And to start with, I'm only drilling down about a quarter inch deep because I'm just marking the holes at this point. Now that I have the four holes marked, I'm gonna go ahead and use my hammer drill and drill the rest of the way down, which will be about three and a half inches. After getting the holes drilled, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my mess. And you can also use an air compressor to blow out each hole that way you have no issues when you're trying to set the anchors. And as you can see here, I'm using a hammer to set the anchors. And you want to make sure to put a nut on the threads of the anchor first before setting the anchor, otherwise you might damage those threads. And you also want to be careful not to hit the anchor too far down and make sure there's enough threads exposed so you can secure the brackets. It's also important to make sure that your brackets are plumb and level because if your brackets are off, your posts will be off as well. And for my situation, the concrete on my stairs is already pretty close to being level, but it was slightly off. So what I did to make my brackets level is I used some washers as shims, and I put these underneath the bracket where needed to make the bracket level. Once I have all my brackets in place, it's time to go ahead and install my upright posts. And for my posts, I'm gonna be using some 4x4 treated wood. And here's a look at the 4x4 posts that I'm using. This is pressure treated. And for the cross members, I'm using a 2x4, and this is also pressure treated as well. And I did pick these up at Home Depot. Now it's time to go ahead and set my post inside the bracket. And these are usually a pretty tight fit, so I do have to use a block of wood along with a hammer to get this to sit all the way down. For my upright post height, I cut three different posts at 36 inches. But really, it's gonna be your preference on how high you want your upright post to be. So for my stairs, I have three different posts total. I got two at the top of my stairs and one at the bottom. But for now, I just wanna install the two top posts because there will be a few more steps involved before I put that bottom post in place. And once you do get those posts seated all the way inside the brackets, you can go ahead and secure them to the brackets with screws with the holes that are located on the side of the brackets. Now it's time to install the cross members and top rails. And I tried to make this a pretty simplistic design so even a beginner can do it. So to figure out where to make my cuts, I measured the inside distance between the two posts, which happens to be 35 inches. So I cut three two x fours at 35 inches each, then attached the bottom cross member first by toenailing three inch exterior screws at an angle, then mounting the board just above the bracket and flush to the inside of the post. Now it's time to install the top rail. And I'm gonna go ahead and attach the two two x fours together first, with one in the upright position and the other sideways on the top, like this. And to attach these two by fours together, I'm using four three inch exterior screws evenly spaced on the outside edge. Now it's time to mount the top rail one inch down from the top of the post by toenailing with two three inch exterior screws on each side of the top two by four, and at least one three inch screw on each side of the bottom two by four of the top rail. And with this bottom piece of the top rail, it should end up flush with the inside of the upright post, just like the bottom cross support. Now it's time to drill some holes for the rebar that I'm gonna be installing horizontally. And what I've done here is I measured the inside distance between the top rail and bottom rail cross support, then divided the distance into even spacing. For example, the inside distance on mine was 21 inches. So to make the spacing even, it'd be about every four and a quarter inches. But I decided to go ahead and round it down to four inches so the gaps are a little smaller towards the bottom of the rail. To drill the holes, I'm using a 5 8 spade bit. And with this first post, you wanna make sure not to drill all the way through. Just drill halfway through because this post will secure the ends of the rebar. And as far as the placement of the holes from left to right, I just decided to go right in the center of the post. Now it's time to drill my holes on the center post and my marks are all in the same place. But for this post, I'm gonna go ahead and drill all the way through. And it'd be a good idea if you wanna keep that wood from splitting is drill all the way through to the point where the tip just barely starts to come out the other side then drill from the other side, and that'll keep that wood from splitting. Now it's time to install the half inch rebar, and I'm using 10 foot sticks of untreated rebar. So I'm just guiding the rebar through the middle post bottom hole, then into the same hole on the first post. Then I just repeat the process for the remaining three holes. And because this rebar is untreated, 
Over time, it'll get a natural rustic look to it. If you're not looking to get that type of look, you'll want to go ahead and paint that rebar first before installing it. And here's a look at the four sticks of rebar in place. Now it's time to go ahead and bend the rebar. And to bend it, it's pretty easy to do. All we have to do is grab it at the point where it's exiting the metal post and bend down. And what we're trying to do is bend it to the point where it matches the angle or slope of the stairs. And maybe I shouldn't say easy, it does take a little bit of force to bend this rebar, but it's not that bad. And now it's finally time to install the bottom post and make the marks on it in the same places as the top post. But these holes will have to be drilled a little bit differently. We're gonna have to drill these holes at an angle that matches the same angle as our stairs. So what I'm doing here is pulling the rebar down to the appropriate mark on the outside of the 4x4. And this gives me kind of a guideline for align the draw for the angle. And this angle should match up with the same angle or slope of your stairs. So right here, I'm just drawing a really light pencil line. That way I have kind of a guide to follow for when I drill my holes. And for this bottom end post, you wanna make sure not to drill all the way through again. We're just trying to go halfway because this post will act as a cap for the rebar at this end. Once you get all the holes drilled, it's time to make your marks on the rebar where it needs to be cut. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull the rebar down to the appropriate mark on the outside of the 4x4 post and make a mark on the rebar about an inch and a quarter past the post. Then go ahead and cut the rebar and I'm just using a metal blade with a skill saw and it might be easier if you just go ahead and remove the rebar but just for demonstration purposes I'm doing this as is. Once you have all the rebar cut it's time to go ahead and loosen the post. Now this is just bolted in place so this is going to be real easy to do. And what I'm doing here is I'm loosening the front two nuts and then taking the back two nuts off completely. Now what I'm gonna do is tilt the post at an angle like this and start stabbing the rebar in the appropriate holes one at a time. And this might be a little bit tricky to get all these stabbed in place at the same time, but it will work. So I have all the rebar in place and now I'm gonna use a block of wood to kind of hit the back side of this post to get that rebar to sit inside the post a little bit deeper and get my post nice and plumb. Once all the rebar is in place, it's time to go ahead and bolt the post back to the concrete and get that secured. And now it's time to go ahead and install the bottom cross support and the top rail for this section of the railing. And this is pretty much the same routine as the railing on the top of the stairs, except there's angles involved on the bottom. To figure out the proper angle, you can use an adjustable framing square, or you can use this trick. Just make the marks on the post where the 2x4s will be located. Then you can just hold the 2x4 on the side of the 4x4s and trace your angle mark onto the 2x4s and that's where you'll make your cut for the 2x4s. And now that the railing is all in place, it's time to install some caps on the 4x4 posts. And I decided to go with some solar light caps, but they have all kinds of caps that you can choose from at your local hardware store. And here's a look at the railing after finishing up. Well, at least with the left side anyway. I also ended up installing some two inch angle iron to the corner of the steps to give it an even more custom look. And eventually I did pour some concrete pads around the steps as well. Well, it's time for me to go. If you like this video, if you could hit that like button and have yourself a great day and I'll see you next time.